Hello everyone, welcome back to Backstage Spotlight. In this episode, we have Gabriel to talk to us. Hello. Hi, how are you? I'm good, how are you? I'm doing really good. Very Thank super you. excited to talk about this. I'm so excited. So we're going to talk to you all about Super You in this episode. Yes, Super You. So we're really excited. I, I am currently in the UK and Gabriel is in the in is in America. And he yeah. did um the American show and I did the UK show. So we're just gonna get started and talk to you about the show. So would you like to say a bit about it? Yeah, so we did the, we call it our world premiere developmental production of Super <laughs> U here in Wisconsin. So Wisconsin's like not really known for theater. It's very, very removed from like New York or anywhere. So it was kind of shocking that we got to do the show here, but we're, we were so thrilled to be a part of it. And I'm from the area here. So it was cool to be a part of Super U. I loved it. For those people who don't know what Super U is about, do you want yeah. to do a little, um, overview of the plot and what it yes. is yes super you is this really cool story it kind of mixes some shows that you might have already like heard of and it just feels like an amalgamation of all your favorite like pop and inspirational and rock musicals but with it's led by all women and it's so fierce it involves katie our main character it travels from her life as a young younger katie to an older katie and she is inspired to draw these comic book characters made up of her friends from um, her childhood. And they, they, they inspire her to keep going and when life gets really, really tough for her. And I think that's, it's just such a cool story and like very touching as an artist to have a story about another artist being shown is really cool. Yeah. The story is so empowering and it's a really nice message that it brings across to the audience of having basically empowerment throughout growing up and supporting yourself through those hard times and I think it's really empowering yeah it's so good and it also adds so many cool other characters through the superheroes and like show different identities and different ways to be powerful and I think just everyone that watches it has a piece that they can just grab onto and that relates to them specifically and I love that about it for sure what was your role when you did it in Wisconsin yeah so we actually they didn't ever have like an ensemble before this. There was always any 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 concert they did. It was just the superheroes, Katie yes. and yeah. a brother and the um the lover. But yeah, they, so they added um an ensemble to it. We were actually originally supposed to be called the Pits with a Z because Ooh. the bolts are the bolts. Yeah, the superheroes were the bolts with a Z. We were the Pits because we were all supposed to be pit singers. So like not even on stage. Yes. We were just going to be off stage singing along. Yeah. And then as soon as Joanne and Lords got here, they just <laughs> blew it up into this giant actual real production of the show. So we actually got to be on stage and be a part of it. So also, we called it Super Humans sometimes. We called yeah, it we things. called it Super Humans. I love that. I love having a little name for the little ensemble. It feels so great. Empowering for us. Um, so Joanne was the director, and Lords Lane is the person who wrote the show, and she is also in it as well. She was in our version. Um, I'm not sure yeah. whether she was in your performance of it. I know she's been in and out, but yeah, that was our first. She was the our production was the first time that. Lords wasn't in it. Lords is just as like a production person, which was really cool to have her around and focused on yeah. how to tell the story from mm -hmm. that end. So we I, we got to work with um Ren Rivera, who was brilliant in wow. that role. But working with Lords, regardless, is just so cool. And yeah. she's she's a ball of energy and positivity and inspiration and she violin is, playing. <laughs> she is an amazing human. The violin is just out of this world she plays that violin and I'm just like what is going on she, she's she'll play good. it she will play it anywhere oh yeah she will truly anywhere anyone asks her to play it she'll go and play it it's so cool insane and I love how she's incorporated the instrument as part of like the superpower and it's so like it's so special and it will really resonate with some people who express themselves through music and the way she plays that violin yeah you could just tell it means so much to her and I think that's so special I know it was really cool to 
have that part of the story change in our show we had Ren playing a guitar so it was like yes. this little like piano yes. guitar thing it was so sick Ren learned how to play it for the show and that was also cool to see someone triumph and learn something and, and then be able to uh really shine in those moments it was so cool and that that part of the show was just really just so powerfully vocally too yeah it's so good yes. Yeah, really good. Um, so I know the show has been like in process over from America mm -hmm. to the UK. So we might have had added um, songs in our version. But when you did it, what yeah. was your favorite song? Oh, oh, I have to. I think it was the country song. Um, yeah. Something's going very wrong. Yeah, with it the is yodeling. so out of pocket. So out of pocket. <laughs> so like not a part of the show for some reason but it adds so much to the superhero characters their their funny qualities yeah and it was fun we were backstage i had a cowboy hat on backstage like we were bopping <laughs> we loved it that's so funny it's just like what about you oh that's a really hard question i was hoping you weren't gonna ask me because it's actually so hard <laughs> but i don't think i have a favorite um gosh some of katie's solo songs are just so oh. powerful um, there's To My Angels, Fragmented, those songs. There's even oh. little ones. There's many ones in between, like, where, like, something happens with her mother, yeah, and then like, she's like, oh. what's this? And I'm like, oh. yeah, that like, one. those just go oh, crazy for some reason. I was like, yeah. lords, yeah. how do you think of these little moments? How? Beautiful. How did she think of them? Like, the little, like, in between, I'm just like, Oh my goodness, that is just one piece of fantastic music. Like how for any intro, an intro to a song or anything, it was really cool, especially to be on stage and like dramatically walk on to her music. I was like, this is literally what she had in her brain, probably. Yeah. It's like yeah. bullies. We were like the bullies and we were walking on. We were all angry. It was so yeah, fun. Yeah. I <laughs> played that role too. And um, we did like a concert <sighs> version because it was like the yeah. debut of it in London. So it was basically like a pitch. Hopefully there'll be a run in London yeah. soon. Um, mm -hmm. And so we did it in a concert form. So we all walked on like with our scores in like, our books. Um, and then we went and sat yeah. down and then like on the bully bit, like I'd just stand up and I'd like say my lines. And then um, we'd like do the different ensemble characters and it was such a good experience. Um, but just- The lines it, that they had to say. Yeah. as bullies like I was like your mom's a drunk like <laughs> yeah I, was I like, loved oh, it my gosh this is like pure acting because I am not that character <laughs> yeah are we did you play um I don't know if they had Zoe Rocks yes, in your that, version that was my part yes I totally knew my friend played Zoe Rocks and we were like that part is so funny to me just like I just think it's so fierce like a social <laughs> media star who's Zoe rocks I love it yeah for those people who don't know the plot and don't know where the characters come in there is Katie who's the main character and she's grown up and the barista is her like love interest and they have a thing but then on the side comes this influencer character Zoe rocks and she basically talks the barista the love interest into making like a social media page um to promote like the singing and um getting like up the ladder in the business on the social media like she has done and so my part was basically being this um like sassy influencer character who would come in and just be like babe the photographer's here and like <laughs> having to just do like like funny one-liners but for Katie the main character um she was just like why is the person I'm like falling in love with suddenly changed so much because he's met this new influencer girl and it was like the um a bit of like like the home wrecker, I suppose. <laughs> yeah, it did feel that way. I was like, oh, a home wrecking <laughs> moment. Like, no, <laughs> it was. It does cause part. some tension in their in their little relationship. So I think it, it's a good like plot device. I didn't, I wasn't expecting when I first heard of the show that I didn't really expect all these little characters to exist. But they wrote they wrote these really unique like ideas, like an influencer who's just I don't know. It's just so cute to me that she's like flirty. And then she's kind of dismissed. Like, she's like, well, she kind of disappears. Hmm. Sorry, I'm about to get that out. Um, 
there's so many different little parts of the story as well so not only it's like mm-hmm. empowering but it's also really sad like oh, not yeah. to give too much away but the story of the mum like it's heartbreaking and the brother and it's all very real like those I don't think something like what the mom is going through is really shown on stage too often like battling with addiction and things like that and especially how does the child uh, relate to that and how, how does it affect them as they grow up and I think it's just it's very important to show that because I think that people are struggling with that and they don't have the opportunity to talk about it it's sort of that thing that is such like a taboo subject but it shouldn't be but bringing light to it is just like it does happen and it makes people who have that in their life feel kind of um feel like that they have a place and that they're being heard and that they're not alone in like the struggles that they may be having um so I think like yeah that message behind it as well is really important and the way it's written is it's so touching because there's something for everyone and I think it's a musical that just has so much potential oh yeah well the dancing aspect of the mother like just all like it it being shown through dance is just another layer of what is important to musical theater is you know like those dream ballet sequences and it adds but you wouldn't expect that to be in the show and it is and it's really beautiful and it can tell a story without even saying any words sometimes and yeah that that's really powerful and that all of it is really thanks to Joanne Hunter who's the fiercest choreographer ever and like really creates those stunning touching moments through the choreo and then scary moments she's just so she has next level energy she is so fantastic their trio of um women uh joanne wendy and lords yeah like they're the powerpuff girls and i need to be a part of it like (laughs) it is so so great you're right they are being in the room with all three of them at once they just bounce off each other in such like a great way and the things that they create it's like they all have the same vision and they all contribute amazing ideas that just come out into like a perfect like vision and it's so the way like working with them is so special because especially when it's a process and you're like seeing it being created their ideas and like trying Mm. something and maybe it not working but then that working on how they could make that better and then what they actually come up with is so good to be a part of it is so crazy even some of the clips I hear from your version in the UK I'm like oh they they might have changed this out of this from our I'm like I can't believe they can continue to think of new things and add and it sounds just like it's supposed to it's so cool they're a very cool group of people loved working with them definitely what do you think the future of super you is oh i think i really in my heart of hearts think that it should be like a disney animated film at some point like a disney yes. animated musical film cuz it just reminds me so much of like those inside out characters like those things yes. that live inside you and like can help you through difficult situation like a real situation kind of how inside out is like so serious yeah. but has all these funny characters going on but I think it'd be so fierce as like a comic book animated thing but I do I can't wait for it to get full productions on the west end and to eventually get to Broadway one day and hopefully like I just think that it's gonna I don't know if boys and men ensemble are going to be a part of the show as much going into the future I don't I think it was we we kind of accidentally slipped our way into it, but <laughs> I think that it's gonna just. I think they're they're gonna maybe add some characters. They they might take out songs, add a new crazy ballad for Katie to sing. Yeah, I mean, whatever they do, it's gonna be good because those people working on it are just great. So and the fans love it. They have their own like fans that follow this show. Like it's really oh, cool, yeah. and I think it's gonna. They're gonna they follow it everywhere that it goes. It's so it's so fierce. Yeah. When I did it in London, um, the stage door was filled with people who have seen the development of it. And when they saw the London premiere, they were just like, wow, like it has come so far. And 
like seeing them react to like how much it's developed and how like amazing it's becoming it was just so special to see that they like have followed it for so long and that like there's a genuine like love for the work and that I think will carry the show it's going to I th even even just like people being at this age or for us as well they were just obsessed with seeing lords they, they they just wanted to talk to lords alone and I'm like like and she wasn't even in our show like she was she was just there to help us and like so she was really she sells the show so well she does the super you foundation and I think that's so inspiring and important as well we did a lot there for that here in Wisconsin and we were able to have so many kids create their own superhero and then come see our show and then they had their capes on so I can't wait to see the future of the show where there's people just in their capes and their masks feeling inspired to be you know that super version of themselves yeah. it, it reminds me a lot of of drag a lot where they where people are becoming the the person that's inside of them that's a little bit bigger than what they other people might tell them they are and I think it's so fierce I even see one day on uh, RuPaul's Drag Race them doing a, a spin-off of Super You for a Rusical one day that would be I think so good a... oh I know I, even my I had a lot of uh, drag queen friends come and see the show here and they were like I'm doing a number I'm doing a number <laughs> with this song for my and I'm like yes so more drag queens performing Super You for their numbers. Oh, yes. Yes, for sure. Um, it's so great seeing all the fan covers on social media. There are just Yeah, so Super You Sunday. There's so many. And um, it kind of kicked off like around lockdown time. I feel like specifically to my angels really hit off with the oh. fans and it kind of went a bit viral, I'd say. And now you just yeah. see covers of it every other scroll I'd say yeah it truly is everywhere now on TikTok and with the more songs that come out I think the more people are going to want to sing these for auditions and yeah people are doing it in their um their showcases I see yeah I think that is so cool like I these songs are inspiring and especially through those sad times during like the pandemic and people super you was able to thrive in a way during that yeah. time period they were able to perform on the trucks up. and yeah and they were able to, to still tell that story where a lot of other shows maybe weren't able to and I think it's the power of Super U not having a specific stage that it performs at it is all over we they yeah. perform on trucks they perform in Wisconsin they perform in the UK for a concert version they will perform this Super U anywhere and I think that's super fierce the trucks is making me laugh because I was <laughs> with um, uh, Melissa at the end of the show yes. um, and she was talking about um, Melissa, for those of you who won't know, is one of the producers of CPU. And um, I was also with Tammy, who's also one of the other producers. Tammy and Melissa yeah. were talking about the process of actually getting the trucks and and they were just yeah. describing how they got in the trucks and just they were just little so like just driving these massive trucks to the um <laughs> to the, like, I never park. thought of that how did they get them <laughs> and they, I can't remember That's the story hilarious. I'll have to get Melissa on the podcast to tell us but um it was so it was so funny the way she described it they were just like oh like are we just gonna drive these pickup trucks because what they did was they lined up like four or five of these pickup trucks and they just sat stood in the back and sang to the audience because it was in lockdown so we had like social distancing like everything that was set up and they were um, performing from the trucks weren't they yeah and they're really like in the middle of a field like it's not like it's it's so random but it's like <laughs> it's very empowering especially for that time when like things were coming yeah. out like how do we do social distance performances such a good unique way like you where else have you seen people sitting on the back of trucks doing like this drive-in musical yeah yeah the ideas they have are just out of this world they will get this show out there no matter what and I think it's they because will. it's such a powerful story or that people connect to it so quickly it's like you hear all you have to hear is to my angels or fragmented and oh. you're like yeah, yeah I've been there I and it, it's just so inspiring especially for the people who they get to perform as Katie are some of the fiercest singers I've ever heard in my entire life Kennedy Coggle is on 
let's hear it for the choice the instagram account she's on there like back to back on posts like she just has the fiercest voice ever she has an amazing voice and the cast in the london one were i was just sat there because we did the concert i was just sat there and i was like how am i like how do i have front seat to this entertainment <laughs> <laughs> right i think about it every time i'm, I'm sitting back i was backstage and i'm like I can't believe I'm hearing somebody belt out, I'm amazing right now. Like, <laughs> and I'm amazing. I'm like, yeah, that. They had just, or, ah, oh, light and me ignite. A, yeah, oh, don't even get me started because those songs need to be on an album because I just miss them. <laughs> the future of Super U is also more cast albums. Like, they need to For sure, put because... out the rest of the songs. Because from rehearsals, we got sent the like um, concept tracks. So some of the stuff from um, America that was like filmed from those performances. Um, but I just want like, just like a cast recording that I could just play on repeat. Like I'm having to listen to the clips on on um, like Instagram and TikTok <laughs> of the show right. to be like, oh, I just want a full version of it. I know I go to that Dropbox every so often. I'm like, I need to hear this specific <laughs> solo in the middle of the show and it's really going to get me through the day. So I can't wait till they're able to get the concept album out or the full album out. For sure. Um, the Because they have like a concept thing on um, Spotify and um, Apple Music, I believe all the streaming platforms. Um, mm -hmm. But it's changed so much. Like there's so many, so much new material that like it could yeah. definitely get a new album. Um, but there's this one section um it's in um the cafe in the like barista one where it's um uh katie and um there oh, she sings like um something da, 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 play stadiums on guitar and just that one line i'm just like yes. that, that piece of music like that just hits different that that one line and every time i heard it i was like oh that hits the spot <laughs> and that's where it's like there's the random twang in there like a uh, yeah. uh, country on guitar and then later yeah. there's a whole country song and I'm like, yeah it's like just so like dropped in and then it leads to something a little bit bigger later yeah. but that that part of that yeah there's just so many like weird inflections that they wrote into the show that are so beautiful and um you they stop me every single time yeah you couldn't even say what style it was because it's such a fusion of so many different influences and that's what's so good about it there's like different things in every song and I would love to be in Lords's brain because what is going on up there <laughs> well she she's even had other superheroes be a part of it at some point like there's another superhero called Lola Touche what? and I'm like how do you think of I know. And I'm like, <laughs> and then even the characters that we do know, I know that they've changed from the other concert versions where they're, they might have been a teacher before. Now in their story, they're, they were children. And I'm like, that is so, how do you keep track of what character would do what thing? And it's mm -hmm. so correct every time. It's so fierce. Like our um, seven was like a social media, like had yeah, this a big social media well. company. Yeah. It was so cool. I'm like, that is so these ideas are so fierce yeah. I don't know how she thinks of like all these characters yeah and how to get different styles so, too yeah and how to get so many different good songs like you'll get someone who will write like one good song but lords like all her songs are just like I just have no words for them like they're just like oh even the songs with no words like they're <laughs> just literally just instrumental that is so satisfying to hear oh, I don't know how she does it she must sit at home and just be like no, that's not right. And then just like, I, I just actually don't. It's got to drive her crazy. <sighs> yeah. I'm going to get her on because she would be so good to talk to about the whole process of how she made the show because. I I want to know. I would brain watch spill. it. I can't wait we to need, listen. We need a Lord's Lane brain spill on this podcast because. Seriously. She would have so much to say. And so many people will listen listen to it she she's so infectious like when you yeah. when she starts talking I'm just enthralled every there's so many videos of like our rehearsal process and every time she's like up there talking like you can see me in the video I'm like <laughs> and I'm like laughing so hard because she's just so entertaining so she needs to be on this podcast oh for <laughs> sure her energy is unmatched like um she 
got ill, bless her, towards the end of um, our rehearsal process. And she walks in and she goes like, I'm ill, but I still hug you. And I was just like, oh my goodness, like everyone needs oh. you in their life. Every rehearsal started with a hug. Oh, and yeah. so sincerely too. And it wasn't like a phony, like hugs. It was, she really does like hug from she her has soul. A, yeah, she yeah. checks in with everybody when they walk in. It is very special to be a part of that show. And I really haven't been a part of a production that was so like, they, they I felt like they cared about like what I was, like how I was a part of the show. And yeah. it was, and I felt so little like compared to the people that were part of it. Everyone has a Broadway credit to their name. You know, I'm just still so young and new to, to the industry. Like and they yeah. were just so welcoming. It's but it's so so special that they they're giving the chance to people that are also not as well established yet to be a part of this because it's gonna kick off really soon. And it's it's very it's it's so cool to say that I was a part of it or that I was even in the room when they were thinking of these ideas. Mm -hmm, for sure. And whatever the future holds for Super U, I hope that, you know. I or we can be a part of the continuation of it because it would it's just the most wholesome environment to be in and it's just a pleasure it really is and I think that anyone who comes into contact with it whether or not they were a production assistant to assistant directing it was everyone really does care so I think more shows like that need to exist more productions where everyone really cares about each other and yeah. that's just one of those shows that it is like that it's so great um if it did open up in the west end would you be making a trip over to the uk to see it oh of course i don't have a passport but oh, that is one thing passport. i would get my passport <laughs> that part i that would be something i would get my passport for i need uh, i do need to sit in the audience and experience super you i can't yeah. wait it would just be Opening. I might get up and start dancing yeah. and singing. I I don't know if I could just and and the audience did a lot would get in the up in the audience and they were clapping along and yes. like cheering at the end of the show and dancing with us and a lot of it was because Lords was in the audience every night oh, cool. and she would watch us and she would she would just give us that love like back so if we were ever too scared or something she would just look at us and we'd be like fine and then by the end of the show she was out there clapping and then everyone thinks she's an audience member and they're clapping along too she's so, so it, it felt like a big party apart from lords of course to come on the podcast who else from the super u team should i reach out mm. to to come on the podcast i think ren rivera they are so amazing they played lords part so then i think yes. it'd be cool to have lords and ren because you can have yes. two different versions of the character right there Oh, that would be perfect. I'll definitely reach out to them. Um, thank you yes. so much for joining me. Um, we all need to go and listen to Super U videos yeah. online. We all need to go and see what it's all about because if you haven't heard it yet, it's definitely a musical that you need to be familiar with because it will it will change your life. Yeah, and it's gonna take off, and you want to be a part of it before before it's too big. Yeah. Yeah, you wanna you wanna say that you were there since nearly the beginning. <laughs> yeah, and it's already taken off. So jump on now. Listen to the listen to that concept album. Go on TikTok. Plenty of super you videos there. So many. I could just scroll for days. And so there's karaoke's on the YouTube page for uh to my angels and fragmented. So yes, give us your you. covers too. And go go join on the um the fan cover the fan cover days because if you post a video singing one of the songs you have a chance of being reposted onto the super you account so if you're a talented little budding performer get on it yeah get on it and there are fierce songs for auditions too so oh for sure and um, thank you so much gabriel for joining me and to talk about super you and on my podcast i really appreciate it you've been great and to everyone watching we'll see you in the next episode Bye. Bye.